Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Daughter of Increase. My name is Nay Denise. For those of you who are new to the channel or who just happen to stumble across this video, and I post new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. Today's video is going to be the second video for the Kingdom Sisters YouTube collaboration that I am doing here on YouTube with a bunch of phenomenal ladies and my sis Angela from Transform Through God's Word. This video was a bit of a four-in-one kind of video where I basically was like, hey, we can just choose whichever we want to do. So it's either going to be a devotional kind of devotional with me or de devotional routine video, if you will. Then you could do a Bible study routine video or you could share your essentials for devotional time or Bible study. So this video is going to differ per channel. I will leave all the links to the ladies down below. A lot of you have asked me if you can join in. You can still join in if you want to. Even if we're not doing this kind of collab at the time, you can still join in in the future if you're watching this. I think this is just a great way for us to build a sisterhood, build friendships, as well as really just expand the kingdom of God here on YouTube. So, um, for me, I was debating back and forth on what I wanted to do, but I settled on doing a sort of devotional with me video using one of my actual devotional books. I have showed you guys plenty of times how I do my devotionals with the Our Daily Bread booklet as well as in the um, Holy Bible app. So today I'm going to be using one of my actual devotional books that I own. I own several. And um, we're going to dive into this. So the one I am going to be using today is A God is Faithful, My Daily Devotional. I shared with share this with you guys, I believe, on Instagram. Um, so they have this one. They actually have a new one out that I just saw. And I'm not even sure when this one came out. Let me just check the copyright real quick. So yeah, these are old. This came out. I don't even know when this came out. Let's see. This one here came out in... 2014 2014 and then they have this blue one that came out in 2016 if I'm not mistaken that's what the copyright said 2016 yeah 2016 so it is by Thomas Nelson um this one says grace hope and love I haven't read this one yet but I found it at Walmart um and you guys can see I find a lot of my things at Walmart so they always have like the Walmart sticker on it so yeah um that's where I got it from but um I got this one years ago my mom and I got the same kind of one and, uh, yeah, I have gone through it not as faithfully as I wanted to because I have so many devotional books, obviously. But I have gone through it, and um, today we're just going to go through how I study. So, tools that I have. Obviously, the devotional book. I have my Zebra Modliner Highlighters, all 25. If you haven't seen that review video, I will leave a link. Just click the eye on the screen to go to that review. I have my cute owl post-its as well as these little post-its. Um, I think I got these from Michael's. If I'm not mistaken, these came from Michaels, and I just cut them in half, I believe. Can't remember. Um, then I have this notebook here, just in case I want to do additional notes. It just says, do what you love. This actually came from Walmart. It's from the Class X Stationery Pink Chandelier Collection, um, specifically the Enchanted Collection. I love their products. Here is the website here, Pink Light Design. And then I have my Bible, which is my favorite, New King James Spirit of Life Bible. If you guys can see. Pay these tabs, don't mind. These tabs are for a sermon I am currently writing. So, yeah. And then to add some fun, I have some stickers. And I have way more stickers than this. But these are the ones I'm currently going to be using. Um, I have the Paper Studios Faith one. These are the foiled sheets. I have the Agenda 52, this one is the Faith Foiled Skinny Pack, and then I have the larger one that's the Sunday Fun Day Foiled Pack. I have the Carpe Diem Sticker Tablet, and this is the Faith, and then I just have the American Crafts Faith one as well. Um, I don't always use stickers, but I think stickers just makes everything so much fun. So we are going to dive into this, and let me know if you guys like this setup. I am trying something different, trying something new with this setup. Um, cause I know that my table, I love the marble on my table so much, but it gives that glare from the light. So I'm thinking I'm going to do this because you don't see the glare of the light. So let me know what you think. But, um, let me just walk through this with you guys. So like I said, this is from Thomas Nelson is mainly written by a lot of male pastors and things like that. Um, it's edited by Johnny Hunt, I believe. Dr. Johnny Hunt. Hope you guys can see it right here, but it's a 52 week devotional. It is set up 
where it's five or is it six days a week? So you have your Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, your Friday, and then your weekend, which can be Saturday or Sunday, depending on how you are. Um, so yeah, it's really great. Some days you guys see I highlighted, I've underlined, um, you know, and then as I got into it, I started changing up how I did things. The most recent one I did, I think I showed a picture on Instagram, um, this I did back in May. It's been a while since I used this. I did this back in May, and I wanted to dive into this the way that I do my Bible studies. Um, so before I was just reading and highlighting and underlining and things like that that stuck out to me. Um, but then I said, you know what, let me do this like I would a regular Bible study. And I went in with the colors, underlining and circling words and stuff like that, writing definitions and writing extra points. However... The coloring, I didn't care for. Um, I was using the Bible study color code that I use, but I've decided to just free fall with the colors because I like bright colors. So we are going to do week 14, Wednesday, and um, here it is. It's the page, page 82, if you happen to have this devotional. I will leave a link down below to Amazon where you can get this one as well as the other one. But yeah, so the scripture for this is Romans 14, verses 17 to 19, and I'm just going to read it. So it says, the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. For he who serves Christ in these things is acceptable to God and approved by men. Therefore, let us pursue the things which make for peace and the things by which one may edify another. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually open my Bible to that scripture. We want Romans. 14, I believe that's what it says. Yes, 14, and then it's 17 to 19, which I'm going to read in my Bible in a second. But I just wanted to open that up. And first thing I'm going to do is go back here. Hopefully you guys are seeing this and the angle and all that. <laughs> um, I'm first going to highlight the actual scripture that it is. So I like to use purple um, for scriptures. No, we're not. We're going to use blue. So I'm taking this. This is the Zebra Mild Liner. This one is in the Mild Blue color. I love these. Um, there is a fine point here, as well as your regular chiseled, bold side, like a highlighter. Um, they have new highlighters coming out August 1st, which I cannot wait. I pre-ordered them already. They are going to be a brush tip with a finer point. So this is kind of like a fine point, and the new ones that they're coming out with are going to be like an ultra fine point with a brush tip. So you're basically getting the same color with four different types of um, pen styles, if that makes sense. So I'm like so excited. Can't wait for those to come so I can do a video on those and try those out. But anyways, highlighting the scripture in my book. So Romans... I just always like to highlight the scripture, um, depending on if it stick out sticks out at me. There are some times when I don't. If I can even find a day where I didn't. Like sometimes the scripture doesn't really do much for me. It doesn't speak to me, so I won't highlight it. But that one I really do like. Um, so we did that. I'm just gonna go through. So the kingdom of God. I'm gonna circle this, even though I do know what the kingdom of God is. <laughs> but. Um, It's righteousness, I'm going to circle. Peace, I'm going to circle. And joy, I'm going to circle. I'm going to circle serves because I feel like that's something that I should have a good understanding of if that makes sense. Um, acceptable as well. Approved is what I'm going to circle. So I'm doing this like I normally do with my studies where I first read it through and then I go and circle and then go in and underline. That's basically how I'm breaking down this scripture. Um, then we're going to go to pursue and edify. So now I'm just going to go in and underline. So in the Holy Spirit is something I really want to understand. Serves Christ is what I want to understand acceptable to God approved by men pursue the things which make for peace yes um, which one may edify another so that's how I have it so before I get into that I'm gonna just grab my Bible and like I said this is a spirit-filled life Bible um, in the New King James translation and I'm literally just gonna highlight that <laughs> 
scripture. Like that that's pretty much all I'm gonna do. I'm probably just gonna stick to this blue. But um for the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. For he who serves Christ in these things is acceptable to God and approved by men. Therefore, let us pursue the things which make for peace and the things by which one may edify another. So what I am going to do now for this instance is I'm going to go further back within the scripture um, and read the entire topic of it. Um, so this is titled The Law of Love. And it starts at verse 14 and it ends at verse 23. So I'm just going to read the entire scripture through. I like reading them by the section headers um, so that I understand the full, not full capacity, because obviously I would have to read the full book of Romans and full chapter 14 to understand it, but just to get the context and stuff of what it's speaking of. So starting at the 14th verse, it says, I know and I am convinced by the Lord. First of all, this is Paul speaking. I just want to say that this is Paul speaking. Okay, so... um. The law of love, verse 14, I know I am convinced by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself, but to him who considers himself to be unclean, to him it is unclean. Yet if your brother is grieved because of your food, you are no longer walking in love. Do not destroy with your food and, I'm sorry, do not destroy with your food the one for whom Christ died. Verse 16, therefore do not let your good be spoken of as evil for the kingdom of god is not eating and drinking but righteousness and peace and joy in the holy spirit for he who serves christ in these things is acceptable to god and approved by man therefore let us pursue the things which make for peace and the things by which one may edify another do not destroy the work of god for the sake of food all things indeed are pure but it is evil for the man who eats with offense it is good neither to eat meat nor drink wine nor do anything by which your brother stumbles or is offended or is made weak do you have faith have it to yourself before god happy is he who does not condemn himself in what he approves but he who doubts is condemned if he eats because he does not eat from faith for whatever it for whatever is not from faith is sin i actually like that i'm gonna underline that for whatever is not from faith is sin i don't know that just that just popped out at me. I'm actually going to underline it and highlight it. I think that's like, wow. If it's not faith, it's sin. That's wow. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to underline the kingdom of God and the Holy Spirit serves Christ. Things are acceptable to God, approved by men. Let us pursue which one may edify another. So I just wanted to underline that. And then I'm quickly just going to read the notes at the bottom of my Bible um, that correspond with that. So 13 to 19, C section 1. All right, so here we go. Here we go. Their fulfillment is not essential to God's reign. I like that so quickly I'm gonna go to the end of Romans um, my Bible has this thing where it's called truth in action which I love because it's giving you ways to actually apply the scripture to your life so um, they said section one of truth in action so here's section one you basically get the truth what Romans is teaching um, the text meaning the scripture that it's talking about and then what it's inviting you to actually do in your life. So, um, growing in godliness, through Jesus we have received abundant grace and the gift of righteousness. This grace does not give us license to sin, but grants us the freedom to live and grow in godliness. Love, humility, humility and unity are to motivate godly living. Godliness prefers others. Yeah, godliness prefers, prefers others, does not abuse freedom, and honors others in the body of Christ. And I'm going to go to 14, 13 through 19. Here it is. Um, do not allow your freedom in Christ to cause someone to stumble or sin. Be sensitive to others in love. I like that. So I'm going to highlight that as well. Um, do I want to use this? I'm sorry. This color I used is um, the apricot. Mild apricot. That's what I used here. Um, and I'm going to use a different color over here. So we're going to go with this gorgeous green. It's called citrus green, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, this is called citrus green. I know it doesn't look like it, but it is. <laughs> so do not allow yourself to cause someone to stumble 
and um, I'm gonna highlight the other portion in a different color. What color do I want to use? I don't know. I don't know. Um, let's go with this color here. This one is the coral pink. I'm just loving these colors. So, be sensitive to others and do not allow your freedom in Christ to cause someone to stumble or sin. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So, I have those marked up. So now I'm going to come back over here. And this is when my phone comes in handy. So, give me a quick second. My phone is going to die in like an hour, but I don't care. I'm going to put my phone on mute. Not mute, but yeah, we're going to put it on mute. Bring my light up. Close out my apps. And, um, yeah, I was on YouTube watching some stuff. So, I'm going to open up the Bible Hub app. Hopefully, you guys can see this. I don't know if you're seeing this. Are you seeing this? <laughs> I'm going to open up the Bible Hub app. And I'm going to type Romans 14. And we're going to start at the 17th verse. And I'm going to just search. Okay. I'm going to hit where it says GRK. That means Greek. It's going to take me to the text analysis. Which I, I'm obsessed with the text analysis because it gives you every word um, broken down into their original Greek language with the strongest number. So... We're not going to do kingdom of God because I know what that is. I'll come back to that. We're going to do righteousness right now. So righteousness is right here. Hopefully this is picking up on camera. Let me actually just bring my light up a little bit more for you guys. Hopefully this is a little better. But here is righteousness. And um, the Strong's number is 1343. I am actually going to hit that number and it is going to open up the actual concordance for me. And um, so here is the Greek word. Um, I, I'm not going to attempt to pronounce it, um, but <clears throat> I'm just going to scroll and look down what it says. So, in the New Testament, it means the approval of God. I like that. The approval of God. I, I like that definition. Deemed right by the Lord is what that refers to. Approved in his eyes. Um, I'm going to keep scrolling. Now, when I get to this section here where it says Thayer's Greek Lexicon, they break down each definition according to the verse that it pops in. So, like, Hebrews 5, 13, Hebrews 7, 12, it gives you it. So, I'm going to look up, oh, here it goes, Romans 14 and 17. So, here it says universally, um, the doctrine concerning the way in which man may attain to a state approved of God uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. integrity virtue purity of life of righteousness correctness and thinking okay I'm gonna scroll and keep scrolling till I get to the exhaustive concordance okay sorry about that my sister had knocked on the door and I had to speak to her for a minute but I'm gonna go back up um, the help word studies section because I really like the definitions that they gave so um, we're just going to go over here and I'm going to put the approval I should be writing in blue ink just because blue ink just pops up better did I write in blue ink on this page yeah like blue ink just looks better against the black but whatever <laughs> um, the approval of God deemed right by the Lord. I like that. That's, that's a good definition. And yet you guys know we do arrows. More righty. Going back, we're now going to go for peace. 1515. 15. And they have quietness, rest, one, I'm just going to scroll. I like how they put God's gift of wholeness. Wow. But I'm going to keep scrolling until I get to the verse that it's in. So here it is um, in this section here. 
It has Matthew 10.34, Luke 12.51, Acts 7.26, and Romans 14.17. It says, peace between individuals, harmony, or concord. Hmm. And that makes sense because obviously this is talking about love um, between man, if that makes sense. So I'm actually going to put that. Peace between individuals. Harmony. And that's why I'm glad I actually read that scripture in whole, the whole section of 14 to 23, because um, I would have just put God's gift of wholeness. But if you really go down to the 19th verse, it talks about which one may edify another. Um, and then it's, it, it's talking about believers as a whole and not just an individual's type of piece. If that makes sense what I just said. But I'm going back. I'm going to now look up joy. It's 5479. Um, it talks about delight, gladness, a source. Joy is graced, recognized. That's good. Oh, I see. <laughs> I love this stuff. Okay, so I'm going to look for Romans in this. If they even have Romans for this. Yes. So it says joyness caused joyousness caused by the Holy Spirit. I'm going to go, let me scroll down and see what they have in the exhaustive section. Gladness, delight. Going up again. I'm going to write this sideways. Um, Gladness caused by the Holy Spirit. By Holy Spirit. Forgot the, but. Going back, we're going to now go to, I believe this is verse 18. So we're looking for acceptable. They don't have acceptable, but they have well-pleasing. So we're going to hit 2101. And we're going to pop that over here. Well pleasing and fully agreeable. We like that. I'm going to go back because I skipped over Serbs. <laughs> um, serving is what they have, but I'm still going to click 1398. It's the Strong's number. To be a slave. I like that. To obey, to be devoted to. Mm, willingly give over to be self-governed. Let's see what they have for Romans. To obey one's command and render to him services due. I like that. So I'm going to put to yield. Obedience. To obey one's commands. I'm going to have to write tiny because I don't have any more space. And render to him services due. So in essence, it's like a slave, but um, not a slave. But we are all slaves to God. I don't care what no one says. 
we all should want to be. So then I'm going to look up approved. I'm going to add my color in. Mind you, I haven't even gotten into the actual devotional portion. This is just me breaking down the scripture from my personal understanding. And then we're going to dive into the devotional. And then we're going to look at the prayer. And yeah, this video may be 45 minutes long. I apologize ahead of time. <laughs> but I'm going to approved. Approved is here. It's 1384. Hopefully you guys are getting a clear view of all of this. Um, so tested, approved, acceptable, tried. I'm going to look for the scripture. Romans 14, here it is. So accepted, pleasing. We're going to put accepted. And pleasing and then we're gonna go on to verse 19 and then we're gonna look up pursue and edify and then I can just start with my colors <laughs> oh I still need to do the kingdom of God obviously so pursue Hmm, to put flight to. But we're going to look according to the actual scripture that it's written in. Here it is. So 1419. To seek eagerly, earnestly endeavor to acquire. I would not have wrote that down. So I like that this actually breaks down the meaning per verse. To help you actually like get an understanding. Again, this is the Bible Hub app. I'll leave links down below for um, Android as well as Apple and their actual website that you can look on. That's a weird box. <laughs> Who cares? And then lastly is edify. It has edification, but it's still the same thing, um, which is our, uh, the spiritual advancement of um, the act of building. But I want it according to Romans. So building or building up. Building up of is what I'm going to put. Okay. Definitions are written down. Kingdom of God. I actually have that definition written down <laughs> in my notes. Um, so it's God's kingship over all creation and the human heart over um, those who trust in and follow Christ. It's the rule of Christ on earth. It is God's reign that governs all things. So we're not going to write all of that. <laughs> but um, I'm going to put God's kingship. over all creation rule of Christ on earth this is normally when you can actually pull out a journal and you know if you want to actually be more in depth I try to keep all of my notes on the page so yeah but we have that down pat I'm probably going to have to put my notes on actual sticky note, but for now, let's just get this going. So. broken down okay now we're gonna move on to the actual like devotional portion <laughs> um, no I'm not gonna do that <laughs> I'm gonna actually write down some of my thoughts first um, concerning the things that I underlined and I'm actually gonna underline the kingdom of God and use this red color 
So we have the red. We have these two colors here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right? Red. We need the green. <laughs> this is what happens when you have way too many colors and um, don't know what you're doing. I think these are how I have my colors set up. There is actually a color missing. This one. Okay. <laughs> this is all over the place. Sorry if you guys hear the mowing. I apologize. But, um, so I'm gonna put my bullet point. The kingdom of God. So this is actually a location. This is something that it's letting me know. So I'm actually gonna just take my notes, um, so, for the kingdom of God, I'm going to write this is God's I'm just going to rewrite the definition that I wrote with some more notes. So, this is king this is God's kingship over all of creation. The rule of Christ on earth everywhere I tread is God's so I'm putting for that um, I'm just gonna go back with this and uh, mark it with this so that I know that that meets up with that um, in the Holy Spirit so I'm gonna go back and underline not eating and drinking. I know you're probably like, what is she doing? <laughs> I'm going back to that. I'm going to take this pink here. Mark this. So, um, I want to write down the note that my Bible says. And um, it says that dietary laws. I'm going to put in needs as well. Are not essential to God's reign. Um, the fruits of the Spirit are of more importance. That's literally what my Bible says, but I kind of like rephrase it a bit real quick I do want to open up my King James and see if there are any other notes this is the um, King James Women's Study Bible from Thomas Nelson you guys know I love Thomas Nelson so yeah um, Romans 14 is the scripture 14 yeah and there's some things that are underlined here so um Okay, so Paul asserted that in Christ, the dietary laws of the Old Testament are no longer in effect. A more mature believer should not do anything that might hinder the faith of a weaker believer. In the kingdom of God, love is more important than liberty. Okay, relationships are more important than observing regulations. One aspect of the kingdom of God is God reigns in the hearts of believers. The kingdom of God is the realm where God's sovereignty is recognized and his will is supreme. I like that. Um, the believer is to live in a manner that promotes harmony, edifies, or builds up another and um all failure to live by faith is sin i i just i love i have to do a study on that scripture because it's like amazing so we have that um moving on to in the holy spirit marking that with the green i'm trying to figure out how i'm writing this so the holy spirit causes The Holy Spirit causes me to have joy and peace. Um, I 
I'm gonna come back to that afterwards. Moving on to serves in Christ or serves Christ. Um, I'm to give of myself wholly. To him and yield to all that he says going on acceptable to God whatever I do should be pleasing to God And because this is like a devotional for me, this is not like an in-depth study. I'm not going to go in with like cross-references and all that. Because I definitely could go on cross, do cross-references for days. <laughs> but we're trying to keep this as minimum as possible. So moving on to the next one, which was approved by men. Um, walking in love. Will cause a man... to see God in me is what I'm going to write and I, I put that because um, whatever I do is going to be pleasing to God and if it's pleasing to God then man will see God in me and not me myself as um, you know the person that I am they would see God I hope that makes sense moving on pursue things in which pursue the things in which make for peace so All that I seek to acquire should result in harmony with others. I should never be doing anything that will take me out of harmony and alignment with other people because as a Christian I am to be um, loving and kind and have harmony and peace with other people if I do not have peace with others and I have discord then there's something wrong with my relationship um, and that kind of hinders my relationship with God if that makes sense I know I keep saying if that makes sense and a lot of you be like don't have to say that but it's just a habit <laughs> um, and then the last note before I actually get into the actual devotional which one may edify another um, so I should build up the body of Christ not hinder or cause it to fall apart okay so I got that down so now we're gonna get into the actual devotional I know this is all over the place you guys this is my devotional time <laughs> Okay, so let's dive in. Has anyone ever said to you, you look like a Christian? What does a Christian look like? <laughs> That's a good question. Certainly Christianity trans transforms our life, but the change is more internal than external. The Spirit of God indwells our life the very moment we trust Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Our passage today reveals some of those inner qualities that will be visible in authentic Christ followers. Righteousness, we have been made right with God through Christ. Our lifestyle reflects our obedience to him. Peace is an inner tranquility and abiding peace. It's a product of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. It's evident in our relationship with God and others. Joy. Jesus promised us full joy and his spirit produces a constant flow of joy whatever the circumstances of life. Nothing can extinguish our joy when we are fully yielded to the spirit. Finally, Christianity is not cosmetics. <laughs> but Christ in us, manifesting his character in us. Don't forget what is absolutely essential, fully surrendering to God's rule and reign. I, <laughs> oh, this is emotional, really great. Um, so, I'm going to put, so underline, Christianity transforms internal, more internal than external. Um, I'm going to, Circle indwells, the Spirit of God indwells. So 
So righteousness, we have been made right with God through Christ. Our lifestyle reflects our obedience. Made right with God through Christ. Um, that inner tranquility, a product of the indwelling Holy Spirit. Joy. His spirit produces a constant flow of joy. Nothing can extinguish our joy. Fully, when fully yielded to the Holy Spirit. Sorry. Finally, Christianity is not cosmetics. I love that. Um, it's manifesting His character in us. I like that. Okay, so let's look up indwells quickly. And I'm, I'm not even going to look in the, like, concordance or anything like that. I'm literally just going to go on Google and type indwells. <laughs> Sometimes it's okay um, to just look up the definition on Google. Unless you're looking up scripture, then I would highly suggest. So, permanently present in. Wow, I like that. So, um, permanently present in. I, I like that definition right there. Let me see if there's any other definitions. I'm going to go to the Merriam-Webster's Dictionary. Dictionary. Um, and dwell. To exist within. Okay. I know that the indwelling is basically the Holy Spirit lives within us, but I, again, you guys know I like looking up definitions. Okay, so we're going to circle that real quick, real quick. scripture now we're going into the actual devotional so christianity transforms what do i get out of that um christianity is not just a word hopefully you guys can hear me I just moved the mic a bit. I'm sipping my coffee, but but a way of life that um, Christianity is not just a word, but a way of life that alters your very being. You know, some people don't believe that Christianity is real. They don't believe that Christianity is something that um, will change who you are. And a lot of people will look at Christianity like it's something external which is why i like that they put it's more internal than external but um you know christianity is real that thing changes your heart it changes who you are it changes everything that you think do and say um you know i'm not the same person that i was two years ago because two years ago is when i really you know got heavily into the word of god i'm not the same person i was back in high school because i'm in high school i was in a dark place so um even yesterday i'm not the same person that i was yesterday because i'm consistently changing into the image of god christianity is about you becoming more like christ it is christ within you which is why it says christ in us um and it's it really just makes you less of yourself and more like christ i like that i'm actually gonna very being less of you 
more of him okay and again this is where you can actually take your journal out like i had originally you would take your journal out and um do your notes i'm actually gonna journal towards the end and come back and show you guys how i journal in here and throw my stickers and whatnot um but yeah so moving on now we are at the gray so more internal than external it's more of a heart and mind change it changes your heart and it changes your mind it's not more so about how you look your attitudes even change I put that it's not so much about how you look. Granted, when you are changed by God, you know, you look better, you smile better. I remember, I'll never forget when um, the chains literally started breaking off my life. And I would come to church the following Sundays and people would be like, oh my God, you look different. Um, you know, there's like something bright about you. There's something happy about you. And even the mother of my church, every Sunday she sees me, she tells me how she can see the joy on me. And, um, you know there are some external things that are visible when you change your life and become a christian and you take this walk within christianity but it's more so internal and that internal work really helps the external things to show if that makes sense so when you have that internal peace and that internal joy excuse me let me just put my phone on the charger Sorry about that I, I put my phone on the charger because it was dying but um when you have that internal peace and that internal joy it begins to radiate and show on the outside um you smile you know your smile is better um you look happier you feel happier and it shows on the outside so i like that um the spirit of god ends well so i'm just gonna put that um his spirit lives within me that's where it lit that's where he dwells at um i am his dwelling place i am the temple of God um, so I am the temple of God his spirit lives in me and it makes me want to be mindful about the things that I do I remember when people used to tell me um, you know don't do certain things because your body is a simple you don't really understand that honestly when people say it it's just like yeah whatever but when you actually go and study the word yourself and you begin to transform and change and there are a lot of internal things that begin to happen within you you start to fully understand that meaning um there are certain things certain places and certain people i just can't be around there are certain things i can't listen to because i physically feel like the inside of me is rejecting it and it sounds so weird but um like with music I love me some hip-hop music I am a music lover I grew up around music my father was a producer he worked with Mont um uh oh my god Montel Jordan <laughs> I couldn't think of his name Montel my father has worked with a lot of people in the industry he's a DJ my siblings my, my younger brothers are um musicians and stuff like that so I grew up around music I'm, I'm a dancer so music is my life I love hip-hop music um but yeah now I can no longer listen to the things that I used to listen to because I internally just the spirit the Holy Spirit just is not with it um, I can literally listen to music depending on the person singing the song I can only listen to hip-hop for maybe 10 to 20 minutes sometimes 30 depending on who I'm listening to and um, before my ears will really ring and it's not like a physical ringing but it's more of a spiritual ringing where it's just like okay that's enough you can't listen to it turn it off um, when I watch certain shows and I read certain books I can't do it anymore because the spirit within me is just not comfortable with it as um I mean it was never comfortable with it but I was never fully aware of it at the time and now that I'm fully aware of the spirit within me um I'm just I'm not comfortable doing certain things I have so many books on my bookshelf you guys I have not read half of them okay moving on so um <laughs> the next thing it says made right with God through Christ um you know, I, I cannot make myself right. There's no, nothing that I can do to make myself right with God. I mean, I will always make myself wrong. That's, it is just what it is. So I cannot 
make myself right with God. Only through Christ can I be made right. Then it says, lifestyle reflects our obedience to him. My life should be one yielded. Did I spell that right? I think I didn't. No, I didn't. <laughs> Switch. Yielded to him. His purpose. And will. Um, colors. Sorry, I'm going a little bit fast. So I'm not keeping up with colors. So this one is the coral. This one is the cyan. I'm sorry, you guys. I'm going a little fast because my phone is actually dying. So, um, peace and inner tranquility are product of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Peace comes by the Holy Spirit. That's all I'm going to put. Like, that's literally all I can say. <laughs> His Spirit produces a constant flow of joy. Joy is always available. I just need... Sorry about my notes. Need to be... Aware of his spirit in me. Okay guys, so because my phone literally is going to die in a few, I'm going to write down these last few notes and then I'm going to pause the camera, let it charge and come back to finish so I can show you guys how I actually journal. Um, and actually I might journal off camera while the phone is charging and then um, show you guys the end of how my journaling page looks and then we'll get into the prayer. So we're just going to do these last few notes here. Nothing can extinguish our joy fully when we are fully yielded to the Spirit. So if I have no joy, I need to check if I have 100% submitted to God and I like that because there are moments in my past where I didn't have joy and it was because I didn't submit to God there were things that he wanted me to do and I just didn't want to give them up I didn't want to say certain things I didn't want to do what he wanted me to do and because I chose not to do what he wanted I didn't have the joy that I needed I didn't have the joy that was already available to me from the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and um when you don't submit to God you don't get the promises of God um it it just it is what it is if you don't submit you don't get the promises um but now that i am submitted to god i have that joy there are some days harder than others um you know i'm still human i still get upset i still battle with um certain thoughts but because i know that i have the indwelling of the holy spirit and because i've submitted myself to god wholly um that joy is there regardless somebody can upset me and i'll still have that joy trust me i've been in arguments um that i probably shouldn't have been in there are you know things that i've gone through recently that have like put me in a sad moment but even in that sadness even in that hurt and that pain that disappointment i still had joy because i submitted everything to him so we have that and then it says christianity is not cosmetics um it's not going to cover up your flaws it, it's not. It does not cover your flaws. And I like that because as a makeup artist, you know, people are always telling me how they want to cover up their marks. I'm just like, don't cover them up because you covering them up makes it worse. It's kind of like if you get a big pimple on your face and you slather on pounds of makeup. Because you're now putting pounds of makeup on top of that pimple or that breakout, you're making it worse. You're not allowing it to breathe. Christianity does not cover up your flaws. I'm sorry, it does not. It exposes them <laughs> out in the open to everyone and it makes you feel vulnerable. But that, that's kind of the point is for you to get vulnerable so that God can 
be your strength so that God can be the one um, who gets the glory out of your life so it does not cover your flaws it exposes and I love that we have manifesting his character in you so um, what, do, what do I want to write um, let me look up manifest real quick because I'm a little slow <laughs> and again this video is so long I apologize but um, manifest I want it from the dictionary to be evidence of to prove to indicate confirm let me look up in the Merriam dictionary I'm gonna write these last two points and like I said I'm gonna come off camera for a minute um, and uh, come back Christ will be revealed. Sorry. Through me. Because he's in me. And um it says manifesting his character in us. So Christ will be revealed through me because he's in me. And basically, um who Christ is should be what I reflect um, you know he's loving he's kind he's compassionate he doesn't you know hold a grudge and that stuff should be revealed through me meaning I shouldn't hold grudges against certain people and I do that to this day I'm not gonna lie I'm human but I'm learning and I'm fully submitting those thoughts and emotions to God and he's working on me especially concerning one relationship that has been a struggle for me um, with my dad and God has literally been speaking to me about it a lot in the past few months and um, I'm working on allowing Christ to be revealed in me through me um, allowing his character to really manifest in me through not holding grudges through loving despite the hurt and um, you know last one says fully surrendering to God's rule and reign Give of myself 1,000%. <laughs> Literally, that's all I need to put is like give of myself 1,000%. So I am going to now go journal my thoughts, make it all pretty, and then come back on the camera and then we'll discuss the prayer. Okay, guys, so I'm back. Um, and I did some journaling in my notebook, but I'm going to just quickly run through how this is set up right now. Let me just move these highlighters out of the way. So this sticky note here has all of my notes for um, the scripture. So everything that I was thinking and processing from after I read the scripture is here. So that's why it says scripture notes. And then this one is from the actual devotional. Um, and the bullet points are marked by the same color highlighter as these notes. So now we are going to dive into my notebook so here's the notebook um do what you love like i showed you earlier and um this is pretty much the entry that i have literally just rewriting some of the notes that i had some things that i didn't have rethinking some things um i did include some stickers so let's just get into that so this let go and let god sticker is from this paper studios oiled sheet sticker sheet um and it's just a gorgeous 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 book i love this book so much i haven't used it as much but i use it here and on the back as well with this amen sticker then we have this jesus christ and holy spirit i took those out of the american crafts uh faith sticker book this family one i took out of 
let me get the original pack i took it out of this faith sticker book from recollections creative year but this is the other pack that i'm currently using up so i just took it off of this sheet it was right here this um joy piece and the background sticker are uh, from the carpe diem faith sticker tablet and i think that is it for here so yeah all i did was i highlighted the topic so that i am aware of the topic i highlighted the main scripture that i was focusing on i also highlighted any cross references and then i just used hearts as bullet points um so just reading through what I put, I said, In the kingdom of God, love is extremely important. The kingdom of God includes his reign in the hearts of all believers. And then I put, read Luke 17, 21. Um, the kingdom of God is where his sovereignty is recognized and his will is supreme. To live in a manner that promotes harmony with others. To live a life that edifies others in the body of Christ. My freedom in Christ should not cause, someone, cause me to make someone to stumble or sin. To be sensitive to others in love. Um, that Christianity exposes all of my flaws. Grace does not give me the license to sin. Grace grants me the freedom to live and grow in godliness. Godliness prefers others over self, does not abuse freedom, and honors the body of Christ. Submission to God means everything. I forgot the two, but to God means everything. Um, the Holy Spirit lives... And me, therefore, I can bear fruit, but only by yielding to God wholly. If I don't feel joy, peace, or love, I need to see where I have not submitted to God in my life. Um, and if I'm not manifesting Christ, then I am out of alignment with God and need to realign myself. So basically, those are notes that I basically literally wrote down here. I just put them on paper and the stickers, I corresponded with what I know the um, devotional in verse was about so jesus christ obviously because it's talking about christ within us holy spirit because the devotional did talk about how the holy spirit indwells in us um let go and let god because that is how i surrender and submit to god joy and peace are what i receive once i submit to god and allow the holy spirit to work within me and family because family just represents the body of christ for me so then we are going to move on to the prayer and the prayer is here and it says, Lord, I praise and honor you who are my sovereign king. I completely submit to you today. May others be drawn to you when they see that you reign in my heart. Amen. And this entry is by Pastor Jeff Crook um, from Blackshire Place Baptist Church in Flowery Branch, Georgia. So I like that they do that. So that's the devotional. So then what I did is I took that prayer and added to it. So on the back. I can read this prayer because it's not too personal. But um, I just put, Heavenly Father, I praise you and honor you who are my sovereign king. I completely submit to you alone. You are the well that never runs dry. I seek to get from the well daily. Peace, joy, love. I come to the well ready to retrieve. Holy Spirit, I am grateful to you for living within me. Thank you for your guidance every single day. The fruits that you allow me to take. I meant to say to bear. <laughs> to bear sorry you guys so the fruits that you allow me to bear and the way you help me to transform daily abba may others be drawn to you when they see that you reign in my heart may i never cause another to stumble and sin i pray that i can be a light to someone in their dark moments i desire to edify the body of christ in any capacity that i can i thank you for exposing my flaws when i try to cover them up jesus i thank you for willingly going to the cross for my sins to reconcile me back to the father may i continue to grow in love in jesus name my prayer amen um and again this sticker is from the paper studios um foiled faith sticker pack this one is from the actual faith sticker sheet from happy planner the original one not the pretty rose gold one and then this is just that sticky note and i just used some elmer's glue to um keep it stuck so the sticker says with my whole heart i overlapped it on top of this one it says i totally surrender to you abba and then i put amen so you know when you do stickers it doesn't have to be all over the place you half the time don't even have to use stickers but yes guys that is my little devotional routine devotional with me kind of video I hope it was helpful. I'm just going to somehow stick these on this page. <laughs> and that is the end of this video. If you guys definitely want to see more 
videos like this, just let me know because I love doing these kind of study with me videos. I enjoy sharing with you guys how I spend time in the word and how I just soak in the word and things like that. So, so again, this devotional is linked down below for you guys to purchase if you're interested as well as the Zebra Mile Liner Highlighters. And um, I'll see you guys. Oh, before I go, definitely go check out the other ladies if I didn't mention that. All their links will be down below. If you have not, um, again, check out the first video. You could just click the eye on the screen for that. But other than that, that is it for this video. Thumbs up this video. Share this video with your friends. Subscribe if you aren't subscribed. And if you are subscribed, just click the little bell to stay notified when I post new videos. And if you have any thoughts, concerns, comments, or anything, just leave them in the comment section. I'll get back to you guys. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.